and realizing that there are so many people who can be helped not only by this technology, but by the educational content that comes along with it. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we talk about low level laser and, you know, once we get through the mechanisms and talking about mitochondrial function, there's such a deeper dive um, into how this can be beneficial for people because it does touch on so many different areas. For sure. You know, when you take a look at this inflammation in general, uh, it affects so many different facets of our life. It does affect us structurally. It affects us neurologically. Absolutely. It affects us cognitively. And you bet it affects us emotionally. We know that there are inflammatory markers, interleukin-6, interleukin-1 beta, and tumor necrosis factor alpha are heavily involved in mental health disorders. Mm. All of this stuff is just combined together. And I think, you know, I understand why we've given so many labels and we have the DSM and all these things in psychology, right? It's important to have that. But I think we've also done the, the society a disservice by saying all of these things are different, right? They're all different. They all have their own makeups. But at the end of the day, a lot of them do share the same characteristics. And, and one of them really is chronic, unenduring inflammation. Because I think we have to put that caveat in. Like when you go for a workout, you have a very rapid inflammatory response. But that's really good for you because your brain and body should sort that out, take care of it. And at some point, it should alleviate. The chronic, unenduring inflammatory responses that are truly the silent epidemic is where we're really having issues. And I think that's why we haven't found a cure for obesity, for Alzheimer's, for you know all of these different conditions that we're looking for, because it's not a one size fits all. And I think, I think that we really need to change that paradigm. And that's why I'm keen on speaking. I love speaking for Konya, but I also love speaking just in general too to the patient populations that we interact with on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, because they really aren't educated on these topics. And I find that very unfortunate. You know, interesting that you said that, you know, in terms of um, how, uh, how come, I I don't know if complex is the right word, but how multifaceted those things are. Because I think that same thing, number one, about Erconia lasers in terms of how you know, you talked about inflammation impacting so many different us in so many different ways. Lasers similarly impact us in so many different ways. We hear stories, obviously, from practitioners using lasers and how they impact people from a structural level and or, a, you know, a biomechanical level. But we also hear stories about how they help people at a cognitive level. And even we've heard stories about how they impact people on emotional levels. And mm-hmm. And so it's it's no surprise, and that's the thing. For those who haven't attended a, a, an Erconia seminar, obviously I haven't been to one of your uh, specific seminars, but I'm guessing it's probably similar to so many of the others, like the Trevor Berries, the Brandon Brocks, the Rob Silverman, the Kurt Gares, to where you're not just sitting in front of a lecture boring you to death about the, the minutia of mechanisms of just light and, and, and all that stuff, but rather you're you're delving into so many different areas you know and so i think that might be surprising to people who haven't been to an erconia seminar before is that you touch on such a diverse array of uh, of topics under that umbrella which is cool and and the thing that's so cool about erconia is they kind of to a large extent give their speakers free reign to do that you know because at yeah. the end of the day lasers they they go into so many different categories so it lends itself naturally to a diversity of, of topics and, and things like that. Well, and, and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think um, one beautiful part about that is it allowed us to really learn. It's allowed us to learn clinically. I mean, when you take a look at research, what, what dictates research in the early stages? It's really the case studies that come from providers who say, okay, this is the fifth patient that I've seen this pattern in. This doesn't make sense. Or maybe it does make sense, but I've yeah. never heard anybody else doing it. So you take that story or that case study and you put it and they're like, okay, well, maybe there's some substance here. So let's do a pilot study. And then you start going down this path and now you start getting to these high level, you know, great one, d- double blind placebo controlled studies, which is exactly what Arconia has done to get all these FDA clearances, by the way, the highest efficacy, highest level studies possible. And, and what's beautiful about that is you start learning and, and the clinical component starts to dictate what the literature states. And in a lot of situations, fortunately and unfortunately, the literature is a bit behind from, cl- from what clinicians are actually seeing and doing in the practice. Absolutely. So I love that I have the freedom to say, listen, 
I know that this isn't a clearance for this specific product, but here's how I've used it. Here are the objective pre and post markers that I've seen. And here's why I think this mechanism makes sense. At that point, then we get to start having those conversations about let's do some research, let's justify this. And I'll give you an example of that is, um, you know, I, I use the uh, EVRL laser over my patient's necks all the time, right? So that Clixta Machado article came out talking about violet and red laser, you know, you're affecting the autonomic nervous system. How is that possible? Well, your vagus nerve, this, this massive wandering nerve controls everything from your throat all the way down to your belly button and the large part of your, your intestinal tract. And what it does is it controls and it has an outcome effect where it controls those things, but 80% of that nerve is just literally sending information into your brain. Well, that's amazing because it's telling your brain about your environment and all these bodily functions. What's beautiful about the vagus nerve and the fact that it is wandering is a couple things. One, we still don't fully understand the vagus nerve, which kind of leaves a bit of a, you know, an amazing kind of excitement kind of moment for people to think like there's got to be more. But the other thing too is your vagus nerve wraps around your carotid artery in your neck. You kind of have a bit of a component here where you're, I don't want to say vulnerable, but you can access it quite easily. Uh -huh. And so traditionally how they discovered this connection was people with seizures hundreds of years ago, what they had found is that pressure over the side of the neck here could alleviate, if not calm down and halt seizures from going on. So research started going in and what they found is that this vagus nerve combination around the carotid artery was interesting. But what they started doing is they started doing vagal nerve implants. They slice the neck open, put a vagal nerve stimulator in there. Think of like a pacemaker for the heart, right? And what you can do is you can send electrical signals in the vagus nerve and it can actually alleviate seizures somewhere around 50% of cases of the response rate. Well, what Conia did was a brilliant study where they actually put laser over the left side of the neck. Um, and they did, I think it was like five, 10 minutes. And what they did is they did quantifiable EEG pre and post. And what they saw was notable changes uh, in electric, electrical activity and blood flow in the brain after doing low level laser therapy over the neck. It's a beautiful mechanism, right? So not only does it showcase that the laser the true faux biomodulation mechanism is having an outcome on the brain, but it's also showing you don't even have to touch the brain to get that effect. I mean, wow. just sit on that for a second and think about the power of that, right?